For the idea that liberal democracy in an institutional form will necessarily lead to a good political order is questioned by several things which have been going on in the past few years. But also, why do we need to promote this order overseas when we are rejecting it at home? The failure of Europeans to pass the European Constitution is an indication that liberal ideas are no more welcome in the liberal West. In fact, in this country, liberal itself is a dirty word. You could be happy to tap dance in a toilet but, and survive, but better not be called a liberal. You're finished politically in this country. It's fascinating, and yet we want to expose the same ideas overseas. The, the new composition of the American Supreme Court is going to be, in many ways, an instrument which is going to subvert the liberal order in this country and probably globally for a long time to come. So the question really, that's my first issue, why promote a liberal order? Don't misunderstand me. I'm a strong believer of these values, but I'm asking you the question as to why we are focusing elsewhere when it's being rejected at home. Secondly, to talk about constitutionalism in the context of Iraq and Afghanistan to me is problematic because we seem to be legitimizing an imperial agenda. I think this whole enterprise from the beginning A to Z is a crime against humanity. We should not talk about it as if it will lead to something good to begin with. The United States had just cause to go to Afghanistan. The US has no more reason to occupy Afghanistan after having established the fact that bin Laden has reconstituted himself in Pakistan. We are in Afghanistan because we are using a country as a forward base, that is all. Number three, we have to also ask ourselves the question, are we talking about Muslim societies, Arab societies, Malaysian societies, South Asian societies, and their compatibility with constitutionalism, liberal democracy, democratic order, or are we talking about Islam per se? Because the only two things that are common between Afghanistan and Iraq is Islam and US occupation. There's nothing else common between these two countries. So if you're talking about Islam, democracy, and constitutionalism, then perhaps it would be more useful to look at the constitutions and the struggles that people in Malaysia, in Pakistan, in Turkey, and Iran have had. In fact, Iran is probably the best case study because in 1908, they voluntarily, spontaneously opted for a democratic constitution. And in 1979, they also spontaneously adopted for an Islamic constitution. Iran would be a great case study to understand the compatibility of Muslim societies, Islamic culture, and Islamic theology with democracy. One more reason why we need not talk about <laughs> We cannot have a meaningful dialogue about constitutionalism in the context of Iraq and Afghanistan is because these are not countries. They do not have sovereignty. The most important thing that countries have, the constitutive principle that makes a country a country is sovereignty. If you don't have it, you are not a country. It's like men without manhood. And therefore, it is difficult to talk about what is going to be the future of these countries. Constitutions, per se, do not have agency. They are not agents. They cannot shape political reality. At best, constitutions are the codification of a popular will. When constitutions become the codification of a popular will, then they are useful, they are meaningful, they are powerful. They are never causal. They are always consequence. This is really very important for us to understand this. When the American public will fully realize the absurdity of the legal changes that the United States has undergone, they will use the American Constitution to reject all of these things and say these are unconstitutional measures later on. But right now, they have all been passed, and the political will of the people is at odds with the American Constitution, so it is a meaningless document. This is an important thing to understand, and therefore, the question is, are 
the Iraqi constitutions and Afghan constitutions a measure of the political will of these people? I, I beg to differ. I don't think they are.